Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Your gift is your ticket out. If you know that song, write it in the comments. If you know where that's from, write it in the comments. Welcome back. Your gift is your ticket out. Do you know where that's from? I'm not going to tell you. I want to see if somebody knows where that's from. If you if you grew up in the 80s, you better know where that's from. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back to Songs of Psalms, Chapter 90. We are on Part 7 of Chapter 90. And it's likely that we might be able to wrap this up today, but I'm not making any promises. We're going to be done when the Lord says we're done, when the Holy Spirit says we're done. We've exhausted this topic. So uh, is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? Um, so welcome back to Songs of Psalms. We started this psalm with a super important question. Is it too late to find your purpose? And we pretty much answered that question in episodes one through six. We are on part seven, but we've answered that question in, in <clears throat> episodes one through six. So, you know, go on to our YouTube channel and go back and listen. If this is your first time joining, if you haven't been here before, but you've come across this and you want to know about purpose, go back and check it out. Um, you know, I, I do believe that we're supposed to be focusing on how do we find our purpose. That I think that's where we're supposed to be at. But again, I'm not making any promises in which direction we'll be going today because we'll just we'll just go wherever we have to go. But how do you find your purpose? If you know you've determined in your heart, yes, I, I want to walk in my purpose. I don't want to make the mistakes that other people made that 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 they forfeited their purposes. Um, I, I, I want to find my purpose and I want to know how, how I step into my purpose. And so this journey that we've been on with Songs of Psalms is primarily for songwriters, right? We've, I've come in here um, from the point of view of a songwriter because music has been so important in my life. And and we've been studying this specifically for songwriters that are following Christ. Songwriters that are following Christ. That, that, that is who we're targeting. Good morning. Everybody's with us already. Marilyn is here. Good morning. Amen. Marilyn says, find your purpose through the grace of God. Praise God. Good morning, Debbie. Um, so, you know, this study, this journey has been specifically for songwriters that, that are following Christ. But listen, if you're not a follower of Christ, I, I want to invite you to stay here, to stay, to stay tuned in, to listen in with us. Because I promise you're going to find and discover something too. You will. And so if you're here and with us and you might be saying if you've been listening and you might be saying well you know i don't hear you talking about song tips what's the best way to write a song what's the what's the strategy i should use right you might be thinking that and 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 you're saying you, you know you're talking like it's a bible study i'm hearing things about the bible and you're right <laughs> you're right you are hearing that you are hearing that, but let me explain. <laughs> Marilyn says I'm not a songwriter, but girl, you, girl, you're looking for purpose, right? We're all looking to make sure we accomplish our purpose. So you're, you're in the right place. You are in the right place. Um, you see what we're, what we've been talking about. These are stories that the early Psalm writers wrote. They wrote songs about life about real life. Their songs talked about the many different things they went through. They, they used songs to express what, what they were feeling, their, their fears, their doubts, their uncertainty. Um, they used songs to express their joy and, 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 and their questions. 
right? And so they've used these songs not only for themselves as, as personal expression, but they've used these songs to teach future generations how to avoid certain things. And so we can learn something from it too, right? So it may sound a little bit like a Bible study. It may sound like a little bit about a Bible study, but, but you know, the Bible is not a book about do's and don'ts. Maybe you've never read the Bible. Maybe you've never touched it or know what it says. And you might think, well, the Bible is about do's and don'ts. I don't want to touch that. It's about oppression or whatever else somebody told you that it's about. And, 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 and let me tell you, the scriptures, they, they tell the history of, of the people that came before us, right? It tells us stories. We're reading it. We're reading. This particular psalm tells us how this whole generation, they messed up. They, they, they didn't make it into their purpose. Um, you know, we don't, we're not hearing about how they were perfect or, or how incredible they were, how much faith they had. The Bible doesn't record all of those stories like that. No, we learn about their mistakes about their failures, about their sins. You know, God didn't hide the fact that they were imperfect people. He let us know through the scriptures. He let us know. Good morning, my daddy is watching. God bless you, daddy. <laughs> I love you, daddy. Thank you for being here. It means a lot. Daddy, we're talking about, about what this is all about. <laughs> we're trying to make sense of it anyway. You know, so again, God didn't hide that his people were imperfect. He, he let us know how imperfect they were. We read their stories. We read their failures over and over. You know, everyone had a flaw. Everyone had something that, that made them need the grace of God. Just like Marilyn just said, you know, find your purpose through the grace of God. Even though God, God saw that these people were imperfect, yet he still used them. Yet he raised them up. You know, uh, one, one person that comes to mind is Samson. Samson, oh my gosh, so much potential. He had so much potential. God was with him. God raised him up, but he was hard-headed, hard-headed. He was hard-headed. He kept making the same mistake over. He was letting women control his path, his destiny. In the end, God redeemed him. But you know, th this is my point, that God used these stories for us to teach us so that we can, you know, not make the same mistakes that they did. And, and, and then teach other generations, the ones that go after us, teach them not to make the mistakes that we make. So yeah, so these were these stories are about imperfect people, yet God loved them. And, and most importantly, what we learn from the scriptures is God's relationship with mankind. It's really, these stories really are about his relationship with us and his relation and our relationship with one another. So why wouldn't we want to learn how to become better songwriters or better people in, in just in general by, by looking at these life situations really, really closely? As me as a songwriter, it makes me a little bit more empathetic when I, I can read this and I can understand what did people go through and, and, and see myself in them and then perhaps maybe do what they did or avoid what they did, right? We learn about ourselves, how we can be like them at times. Sometimes we're doubtful, sometimes we're fearful, sometimes we're hopeful. These are all things that as humans, we all struggle with. So I just wanted to give that context about why we're studying the songs of Psalms. But back to purpose, let's get back on track. Um, you know, we're taking our time with Psalm 90 because it's an important message, something that we have to pay attention to. Again, like I said before, a whole generation missed out on their purpose. You know, they died unfulfilled and miserable. They had an opportunity to live their best life, but they blew it. They blew it. So how do you find your purpose? How do you make sure you don't do what they did? 
How do we make sure that we stay on track? How do we make sure that we don't veer off like they did? They started right, but they didn't end right. And the last time we got together, we spoke about Holy Spirit. He's a teacher. He's a guide. He's a counselor. He's a helper. Daddy says, good morning. Let me just tell you what God, my daddy said. Good morning, princess. God bless you and keep you doing what you love, spreading the word of Jesus. Daddy loves you. Yay. That's my daddy, y'all. <laughs> I'm a grown woman, but I am still that little girl that loves her daddy. <laughs> Thank you, daddy. <clears throat> Back to Holy Spirit. He's a teacher, he's a guide, a counselor, a helper. He's a whole lot of goodness. A whole lot of goodness. And and listen, if we want to find our purpose, we probably want to make it a priority to stick close to him. Stick on. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. She says you are blessed, sis. Thank you. We all are. Amen. You know, we want to we want to stick close to Holy Spirit. Look, I I need him every single morning, even to do this, even to do this, to be here. I've committed to do this. I need his strength to do it. I, you know, some mornings I wake up and I'm drained, emotionally drained from the day before. Um. And sometimes I know what kind of day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have in the office and things that I have to accomplish. And there's a lot of things happening and a lot of things I'm working on. And, you know, truth be told, there's days I don't want to show up. I don't want to show up for life. Right? We all sometimes can feel that way because of the things and the responsibilities we have. You know what I mean? Um, there's days I'm like... I need a sick day, <laughs> but I'm not sick. I'm not sick, but I need a sick day. I need a mental health day. <laughs> and and I'm thinking like, what, can, what excuse can I use to convince myself that I should just not show up? Not show up, just, you know, just, just stay home. <laughs> stay home, lay in bed, you know, but you know, you can only do so much sleeping, right? Either, like you can't be in bed all day. And my, my brain, you know, goes into processing mode thinking like, what, what can I do? What should I do? What, is there a way I could just stay home? <laughs> you know, um, but out of nowhere, out of nowhere, Holy Spirit will remind me about something pleasant. You know, like I'll hear the birds chirping out the window or, or, or sunlight might come in through the room, into the room. And that's it. I'm like all of a sudden I, I can jump out of bed and I am ready to conquer the world. Just like that. Just like that, y'all. Does that happen to you? Does does that happen to you like you're drained and you're tired or you you feel like you didn't sleep enough or you know, whatever, you had restless night and, and you're just not ready to show up for life? And then suddenly something comes into your mind. And, and and you're good. Has that ever happened to you? If it has, write it in the comments. Let me know. What is it that you you dealt with? And and how did how did that happen? Like how did you bounce bounce out of it? Um when was the last time your head wanted you to do one thing, but Holy Spirit changed your mind about it? Or maybe you didn't know it was Holy Spirit, right? He didn't use condemnation or threat or fear to get you to listen to him. No, he gave you something pleasant, like listening to the birds outside. Every time I see the birds, I'm like, I think about, about that scripture where, where, where Jesus says, look at, you know, like the flowers in the field and the birds in the air, they don't, they're not looking for, they're not like struggling, looking for food. They know their father provides it for them. So yes, sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit will use something to, to just get us back on track. And, and, and forget about like the craziness of life because we can get overwhelmed, so overwhelmed that we don't want to show up for life. 
and that little pleasant thing that you heard maybe the the birds chirping or 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 the the sunshine coming through or maybe you hear rain falling you know i love spring rain spring rains oh the 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 fragrance that it puts in the air is incredible um that little small pleasant thing is powerful and it's strong enough to change your mood and attitude and that's what we need sometimes we need a mood and attitude adjustment in the morning and holy spirit will do that for us i tell you we need him by our side because he he knows how to get us through he knows how to get us through our day and he will know how to get us through our life i want to take a moment just to look at what proverbs 2 says about holy spirit about the spirit of god proverbs 2 6 through 8 it says <clears throat> excuse me for the lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding he holds success in store for the upright he is a shield to those whose walk is blameless in verse 8 <clears throat> for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones did y'all catch that did y'all catch that look i'm gonna tell you again he gives wisdom knowledge and understanding those are three things not just wisdom wisdom knowledge and understanding and i don't have time to break that down right now but he gives wisdom knowledge and understanding it says he also gives success for the upright success he gives you success he is a shield which means he's a protector and a defender but look this is what stood out to me this is what i believe is most important for us he guards the course of the just he guards the course of the just he protects he protects the way of his faithful ones so he guards and he protects our path it's his delight to keep us on the path we're supposed to be on it's his delight to keep us on the path we're supposed to be on that's good y'all that's good. this is why we need him this is why we need him not only does he give us wisdom knowledge and understanding but he holds success for the ones that are upright he's a shield and he guards and protects why would we not take advantage of of that why would we not take advantage of him psalm 66 9 says this he preserves our lives and keeps our feet from slipping he preserves our lives and keeps our feet from slipping that means we're not going to go wrong when he is leading our life and catch that not controlling our life leading our life he is in the lead if he's giving us wisdom knowledge and understanding he's showing us things to, to keep us in the right path he's he's protecting our way he's protecting our path he preserves our lives and keeps our feet from slipping and you know why this is important when you're doing your purpose when you're finding your purpose because some people find their purpose some people they get in it they're in their purpose they start right but they end up <clears throat> they end up wrong they start right and they end up wrong case in point look at all of the hollywood the what hollywood produces right hollywood produces stars mega stars mega stars michael jackson whitney houston prince George Michael. I'm, I'm just right now I'm thinking of singers. Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. If we want to think about an actress, Marilyn Monroe. Think of all of these incredible performers. They started right. They followed their purpose. 
they were on track they followed their purpose they achieved fame and fortune they achieved everything that the world offers but the Bible says what is the benefit of man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul right Hollywood just snatched the life out of them snatched the life out of them took advantage of them they all got drug addicted eventually they died they died gone too soon gone too soon the Holy Spirit won't let that happen because the Bible says he preserves your life and keeps your feet from slipping he preserves your light <clears throat> I'm sorry and he keeps your feet from slipping Marilyn says yes so sad Holy Spirit will preserve your gift when we walk with him he was gonna he's gonna preserve our gift he's not gonna control us right he doesn't control us we're not robots he's going to lead us in the way that we should go he's going to give you ideas and listen, any good idea that pops into your mind, it comes from Him. And you have to act on it. You know, many times Holy Spirit is giving us ideas and we just don't, we don't act on them. And so, you know, we miss out on an opportunity that could have been a blessing to us or to someone else. For instance, you know, someone that you haven't seen for a long time and all of a sudden they pop in your mind. The Lord is bringing them into your mind for a reason. Maybe you're supposed to call them. Maybe you're supposed to pray for them. Or maybe you get a song idea for my songwriters in the room. Um, you know, you get a song idea and listen, listen, you better pull your phone out and get that, get that piece, whatever you just heard, get that in your voice memo because I promise those ideas are like vapor. You won't catch them fast enough because they disappear. I've woken up in the middle of the night and there would be a song. There would be a song or maybe I was dreaming and I heard a song in my dream. And I would be so tired, so tired that I was like, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't record it. And I'll be like, I'll remember. I'll remember. And guess what? I wake up in the morning and whoosh, it is gone. Gone. I have another story about that, but I'm out of time. I can't share it. Um, but let me just get back. Holy Spirit, <clears throat> he gives us ideas, right? And we just got to act on them. We got to, and, and the more, the more we act on them and, 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 and we become faithful with the little things that he's giving us, he will trust us with bigger ideas and bigger things to do, right? So to find your purpose, you need a partner, you need a partner. And Holy Spirit is that partner, man, woman of God. <laughs> Holy Spirit is that partner. He wants to partner with us. He wants to come alongside of us. And he wants to get us to the finish line because this world will chew us out, chew us up and spit us out. Chew us up and spit us out. That's what happened to all of these legends that are no longer here with us. They should have been here. Look at the talent that Michael Jackson had. I love, oh, I love to see him in action. You know, what 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 a genius, musical genius this this man was as a young child. But Hollywood chewed him up and spit him out got him so you know whatever and he's no longer here <laughs> Debbie says Holy Spirit is my partner that's good girl yes he is Holy Spirit like like the scripture says in Proverbs too he's gonna preserve our life he guards and protects our course our path he already has success in store for us, right? We, we all want success. Everybody wants success and he wants to give it, but it's not the kind of success to inflate our ego or make us prideful or covetous, you know? It's not, 
his, it's not that kind of success. His version of success looks different than our version of success. But I promise you it will be for our good and for the good of others. So I'm out of time. I am out of time again. Um, and I guess, yeah, I guess we're not wrapping this up today like I kind of said we might be doing. Um, but I, again, I said we will be done with this topic when Holy Spirit says we're done. Because he is trying to teach us. He is trying to mold us and shape us so that we can be that generation. Ooh, that we could be that generation that is led of the Spirit walking in the spirit producing the fruit of the spirit and changing this world you know there's a lot of stuff that the enemy is spewing into the world right now if you listen to music and the music that just recently came out by a certain individual first of all don't listen to her music don't li don't listen i'm sorry i'm gonna just say don't listen to beyonce's new music please don't this is what the enemy is putting people to create, to influence a generation. So we need people to rise up, God's people to rise up and also influence, also influence. And I'm gonna leave it at that because if I get into it, I won't be done. <laughs> Marilyn says Beyonce, yes, exactly, yes, yes. And you know, the enemy will use anybody. <laughs> To say and do and become whatever he wants them to do he's real but guess what God is real and if we just make ourselves available and we don't back down and we don't shy away from being everything that God has called us to be then we too can influence the world all right all right so we're gonna wrap this up the next time we get together until then let's just invite Holy Spirit to lead us today, to be our our, our, our uh, cover, <laughs> I can't do, I'm like, I have so many thoughts in my head, I can't get them all out. To be our guide, to be our protector, to be our helper, to be, to be our counselor. Today, just today, we're only focused on today. If we can be everything we're supposed to be today, we're good. We are good. All right, blessings to you, my friends my my songs of psalms tribe thank you for being here for blessing us with your presence and um you know for those that, that are watching for the first time follow us on second generation music on facebook and instagram go to secondgenmusic.com get to know us the links are in the description for you follow us and sign up for our weekly blog we're going to be talking to you a little bit more in depth there our music and vocal classes start next week. I mean, I'm sorry, not next week, next month. Um, what did Marilyn say? Continue to pray for me. Yes, girl. Father, we just pray for our sister, Marilyn, who hasn't been feeling well. Lord, you are her strength. You are her portion. I thank you, Lord, that healing is her portion. I pray supernatural strength. May you renew every single cell in her body right now in the mighty name of jesus supernaturally strengthen her fill her up with the joy of the lord which is her strength in the mighty name of jesus no weapon formed against her shall prosper no weapon formed against her shall prosper in the mighty name of jesus we declare healing we declare uh, uh renovation and restoration in her in her cells in the mighty name of jesus Magda Velez. Thank you for joining, Magda. We're just about to wrap up, but God bless you. God bless you. And so we just thank you for the quick work that you are doing, Father, that as of today, Marilyn will no longer be afflicted, but she will be strengthened and she will do the very thing that you have her to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. God bless you, girl. Love you guys. Let me just bless you as we leave here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his perfect shalom. Thank you, my Songs of Psalms tribe. I will see you next week, God willing. God willing, I'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao.